Hey guys, John here. Today we're in pigments and today I want to show you how to make this type of rave, detuned, saw wave types of patches with a really cool technique. So it sounds a little something like this. <laughs> Now there's a few different ways to make this type of patch. So let's go to a new preset and I'll show you what's kind of fun with this one. So in a default preset, let's go from wave table to analog. Now we're gonna start off with a saw wave. Now, if we introduce this second oscillator here, which is also a saw wave and let's change the shape to a ramp up instead of ramping down. We kind of, you would think that these two would cancel each other out. The reason that they don't is because we have our drift knob. However, if we bring this all the way down to zero and we play some notes, as you can see over here on the keyboard, it's not going to play anything because they're just canceling each other out. But with a drift knob, if we start introducing this, we can get some wild textures. So I definitely recommend you try this technique at least for any other patch, but it's really cool to get this type of sound. Now for this patch, I went somewhere around 0 0.04951, around here 0.5 or 0 0.05, which is kind of cool. And then we added a saw wave here at the bottom, but drop this down one octave, so down 12 semitones. So we have this basically. So now what we can do is start adding some units in here. So let's go full voices and then really detune this. So we're kind of getting that texture there. Now the, uh, the release is pretty, or pretty low value. So we need to change that here on the envelopes tab. So let's bring our release up a little bit. Now, depending on how detuning you want to go, you're going to do that here on the detune knob. And it's a cool way to get a really, really big sound. Okay, so next we want to kind of talk about filtering. Now, as you probably know, my favorite filter in pigments is the MS-20 by far. So with a patch like this, let's bring it down just a little bit like that and drag and drop envelope two on this guy and give it some resonance. Now this thought process can go a couple different ways. So here we have a really fast attack opening up this filter, which is cool. Um, sometimes if you wanna play more of like a pad style, you maybe wanna slow down this attack here. Let's bring this volume down. This can get pretty loud. There's a little too much resonance. And maybe slow down the decay a little bit, inc increase the release too. And we don't want too much modulation. Maybe 0.25 is a little bit too much. We can bring this down a little bit and kind of open up our filter just a little bit more. So we have that, and if you want to do it more like a plucky lead sound, then maybe in, uh, reduce this attack a little bit. Okay, so we have something kind of like this here. Now let's jump into the effects. There's a couple things we want to change here. So let's swap out this delay for an EQ because there is that mud in there. Let's bring that down. And these sounds are generally really high frequency presence. So we can go into a high shelf, maybe increase that and find a nice spot here. Right, something like that. And we could as well, if you we wanna add a little bit more content to this, go to the noise and increase some of this volume. And instead of white noise, we can go a little bit towards the blue. Okay, so we have that, and a couple other things that we want to add to this is going to be a little bit of chorus and maybe a little bit of delay and reverb, things like that. We couldn't, we can even try to do a little bit of phasing that might be kind of interesting as well. So, first off, what we can do is go to a chorus. So, depending on your preference, you can go to the Juno 6 style. I personally like this regular one for this type of patch. 
has a nice swishy kind of thing there. And maybe a little bit of longer release, I think, as well. Okay, so we have something like this. This is pretty cool. And this dry wet is quite a lot. So 50%. I kind of like it there though. So feel free to place out wherever you want to. Now for the next tab, we do want to have some delay because we, you know, it's just kind of standard. <laughs> Now, generally, a patch like this will use more CPU for a couple different reasons. We have lots of unison in this one. We have a long release for our envelope for the for the VCA, and then we're going to be adding some delays and some reverbs with long tail. So keep in mind, this is going to be a resource heavy patch. But if we want to dial that down a little bit for so it's a little bit uh, easier to work with on a on a rig or system, maybe dial down the release here a little bit, reduce some voices, things like that, reduce the uh, the reverb tails. That's kind of be going to be a way to optimize that a little bit more. So in FXB, uh, we can go to a reverb, or you can do it on a send. It really depends on how you want to do it. Reduce the low frequency here, and maybe increase the size a little bit. It's actually a little bit too slow. 120 is maybe something like 144. something kind of like that that's kind of an interesting sound there so this is kind of the basics of it and like i said we we can do some phasing so maybe bring down a reverb down to this one open up our none here and then like i said we can go phaser maybe we can go flanger or the bl20 flanger that one's kind of nice too but let's just kind of see what this flanger or this uh, phaser sounds like <laughs> and a little bit goes a long way Okay, so I kind of like that sound. That sounds pretty cool to me. So if you're at the same spot here in this patch and you're kind of maybe wondering, okay, what do we do from here? How else can we kind of make this a little bit cooler? I would recommend to add stuff to the macros. Now there's a couple things you could do. I highly recommend to do something with the cutoff. So drag and drop this guy here, maybe bring this down like that, put our macro all the way to the top and kind of see where we want the max value to be. Maybe something like that here so we can start it off kind of low. And then maybe automate that to open up the brightness before something happens. It's always kind of a cool knob here. So let's look at that cut off just in case. And then the second one, you could put resonance, but for this patch, the resonance is kind of one of those things where it's okay where it's at, but again, totally up to you. So something else, maybe you want to add more to the detune. That would be a good one to put this on. So maybe bring our detune kind of low here. So it's pretty not detuned. Obviously it's kind of straightforward. And then drag and drop this guy here, go to a max value and see how much we want this detuned as. <laughs> That's pretty excessive, but again, like when I like making patches, I like to doing doing the full value of something kind of excessive because you never know, maybe that like 1% of someone using this patch really wants that crazy detuned sound. So it's kind of nice having that in there. So we can bring this down and kind of find the sweet spot that we like. <laughs> Thank you. 
So that's definitely kind of cool. So that was D tune. That's I guess that's kind of cool there. And then we have three and four. So you could uh, do stuff with the effects. Maybe you want to have the effects, the chorus, delay, and reverb, and then maybe you want the phaser separate so you can separate those two. That's just an idea. I mean, you can always add different kind of things to this and you know modulate or put whatever you want on your macros. But that's kind of an interesting recipe to make this type of sound. It's really based on the fact of doing two inverted saw waves and kind of messing with the drift in the unison and the detune, and then adding the choruses on top of that. So yeah, definitely give this patch a try. It's a fun one. It sounds huge. <laughs> And there you go. So yeah, hopefully you learned something. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.